Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we are going to be introducing algebra and algebra being one of the seems to be one of the most difficult things that kids are able to wrap their heads around so we're going to be starting very very simply and very foundationally today. So the concept that we're going to be working on is something called pattern rule. Now I've done a previous video about pattern rule but today I'm going to update it a little bit. Um, there is a card in the top right hand corner for you to go and take a look at. So uh, why don't we get started? Well first of all let's get started with a pattern. And a pattern, the human brain really kind of looks at trying to make sense of things through patterns. We want things to be nice and neatly organized for us to be able to solve questions and look at expressions and uh, there's going to be some terminology that we're going to be using that might not make a lot of sense to you so we'll walk through that. The three things that we're going to be looking at are constant, variable, and something called the nth. Okay so let's get started. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a, look at a regular pattern. So we've got let's say 5, 7, 9, and 11 and then we'll go dot dot dot. Now we might look at that and we might say okay well that's a pretty simple pattern. What we have is a pattern that is increasing by two every time. So the steps that I'm asking my class to do and something that you should probably consider doing is creating something called a table of values chart. And a table of values chart is pretty much just a T chart where on one side you've got a term number and I'm also going to put a little N down here which is my variable and that will come into play in a second. And then on the other side I'm going to put a value. Well the value I can fill out relatively easily because what I have here is four numbers. The first number, term number one, which is the first number inside of my pattern, has a value of five. Okay? Term number two, or the second number, has a value of seven. Term number three has a value of nine and then term number four has a value of eleven. So we haven't figured out a pattern rule yet, but hopefully when you look at this number, these, this group of numbers, you're saying, okay, I see something that is happening fairly consistently. And that is every time the term number changes, so when it goes from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4, we're adding 2 every time. So 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 plus 2 is 11. So we are seeing a constant, meaning that it's happening all the time. We are seeing a constant increase of 2 every single time. Now here's where the creating of the pattern rule comes in. We're trying to create a mathematical expression or an algebraic equation or expression that we can use to help make things easier for us. And the reason we want to make it easier for us is because what happens if I want to go to the tenth term? Well, I could go 5 would be 13, and 6 would be 15, and 7 would be 17, and so on and so forth, but that becomes really difficult when I want to figure out what the 68th term is, or the negative 27th term is. That becomes really difficult for us to do and really time consuming. We don't really have the time to do that. So what we want to do is create a mathematical expression that's going to make that easier for us. And we have everything that we need in order to do that. Here's how this works. When we find out that our pattern is increasing by the same every time, that's going to become uh, the, the start of our pattern rule. We are going to write down two because this was increasing by two every single term. Two every single term. And every single term would mean that every time we're increasing this number by one, it's adding two. So the start of our pattern rule would be 2n. And it could be a variable like n or f or t or whatever it is you want to pick. I chose n and this is where that n comes into play. And what this is saying is every time the term increases, 2 is being added. We're multiplying 2 times the term number. So this is a pattern rule right here, but is it the right pattern rule? That's where we need to, that's what we need to figure out. So let's plug in some numbers. 
If we take term 1 and plug it into here, 2 times 1, that gives me 2. But I don't want 2 because that's not what that number is. Term number 1 did not have a value of 2. It had a value of 5. So what I'm going to need to do is adjust my term number here. And I'm going to need to adjust my pattern rule, rather. I'm going to need to adjust this. In order for me to get t2 times 1 to equal 5, I have to add 3. So let's try this now. First of all, let me get rid of this guy. Now that I've added another constant, constant meaning that this plus 3 is not going to change, what will change is this, the n part. Because every single term number, it could be the 50th term, the 80th term, the negative 28th term, that can change. The fact that we're adding or subtracting 2 does not change, and adding 3 will not change. So let's try this. Let's go 2 times 1, first term, first term, term number 1, plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. And if I look at this number, that is the value that I was looking for right there. So what I've done here is I've created a pattern rule that works. And this n is the term number that could change. Let's say I'm putting blocks on here. Every time I have a set of blocks, I'm adding two blocks every single time. Well, what happens if I add two blocks, let's say, a hundred times? Well, that means instead of this n being 1, the n is now going to stretch all the way down to 100. But I can figure it out using this. So let's try it. Let's go, uh, we'll go really, uh, uh, you know what, we'll keep it blue. 2n plus 3, 2 times 100 plus 3, 2 times 100 is 200 plus 3. There would be 203 blocks if I was on the 100th term based on what we're seeing here. So if I continued to write this pattern out, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and got to the hundredth number in this sequence, that hundredth number would be 203. Okay, so that is pattern rule. Let's go over a couple of things. We talked a little bit about uh, an, uh, three pieces of vocabulary that you're going to need to know. The first piece of vocabulary that we talked about was the constant. The constant in algebra is something that does not change. So in this case, where we saw the plus 2 happening, it was constantly adding 2. Add 2, add 2, add 2, add 2, and so on and so forth. That was a constant. That became our start of our pattern rule. The other constant that we had in this case was that we needed to add 3 in order to make these values work. Okay, so if we went 2 times 1 like we did, it gave us 2. We needed to add 3 in order to get 5. If we went 2 times 2, that's 4, but we need to add 3 to get it to 7, because 7 was the second number. So we're in, in all, what we're trying to do is trying to get these values to work. If we went 2 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and we need to add 3 to get to 9. And so we know this pattern rule worked. So that's what the constants are. The variable, in this case, is the number that can change. So am I looking at the first number? Am I looking at the fifth number? Am I looking at the twentieth number? Am I looking at the negative numbers? All of those can be plugged in to n, and we don't know which number that we're looking at there. That is the variable. Now, the nth term is the number that is selected. So if your teacher says to you, okay, I want you to use a pattern rule to solve for the hundredth term, the nth term, could be any term, 
that number is the nth term. Nth term meaning that it can be any number. It could be negative 250, it could be 250 or 200 or whatever. It's just whatever number that your teacher is asking you to plug in. And based on this pattern rule, whatever number you plug in will give you the value that goes on the next side. Okay, so that is creating pattern rules in a nutshell. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or something doesn't quite make sense or you want to see something look a little different, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe the video and thank you for checking this out. We are going to be moving on from this into one-step algebra or solving pattern rules next. So watch for the next video. Thanks very much.